Today I'm going to show you how to use the project manager and the yarn calculator. You will, it, it is an add-on and you will find them on this add-on features menu item which was demonstrated in the previous demo, demo on tracking. The third icon down is your project manager icon. We'll tap on that to bring up the project manager. The first thing I want to show you are the default settings. That's what you should set first. Those are when you use for every pattern when you first create the pattern. It will pick up the values that you've set here. If you use metric, then you should set it here and use it for all your patterns. The waist length is the approximate amount of distance that you want to allow for your waist yardage. The shrinkage is the draw-in plus the amount that the fabric will shrink when you wash it. You can set the number, the default number of shafts and the default number of treadles that will come up when you pick up a new pattern. You can apply these to the current pattern, but it won't do the shafts and treadles. It will change the two others. We can set this one to say 20, let's set it to 30, and now we'll go over to project setup. Oh, I forgot to do the apply, so it's still 27. So we'll leave it at 27. You can change to metric here, it'll recalculate, but your measurements will then be approximately the values that you might want. You might have to adjust them for the metric. The fabric width has three choices. The one we'll look at first is the loom choice. This doesn't mean how wide your loom is. It means how wide on the loom you're going to put your fabric. So if my loom is 26 inches wide and I'm weaving a scarf, I want to put on, say, 10 inches. So I'm going to pick 10. When you, after you complete it, you need to pick next or tab so that it goes to the next value and it accepts that value. So the next value here now is the length on the loom. That's the length that you will put on the loom. So for two scarves, I usually put five yards. So I'll pick five and then I'll pick done. And now those values are accepted. The last item here is the type of weave. Right now we will use balanced weave. Uh, in the next segment of the demos of this thing, we'll talk about the work faced and the weft faced. Now let's look at the calculations for what we entered. You'll see the information that you entered, the number of wefts in one repeat, and we entered the loom length, oops, the loom length and the loom width, and this tells you what the yardage that you will get out of it after the shrinkage and draw in and are applied and the waste. So you'll get nine inches in width and 3.83 yards approximately. Down here you see the warp count, the pick count, that is again proximate because every weaver weaves slightly different. This is approximately the number of yards that you will need for this pattern. And you know, after you've woven a few times, you kind of know, do I weave tight, do I weave loose, do I need to adjust this up or down. Here it shows you each of the yarns. We haven't entered any information about the yarns, but it still calculates the number of warps and the yardage needed for each yarn so that you can look over here and see that you need 420 yards of this peachy color. So now let's go back and look at the yarns. This displays a list of the yarns and for each yarn, you can tap on the type and the name and change it. There's a little X here that deletes it. We'll call this one Peach.
And you pick next or done. Again, the X. We're going to leave this as 10 2. Often I write tinsel there or something, but, or you can leave it blank or you can write whatever you want. The calculations don't use that field. It is for your own information. The set field, I want to pick next. The set field is, uh, will use the default set for your pro project setup and that is the best set to use. If you're going to do variable width or something, then you might want to change it and use a different number. But if you're always going to use the setup yarn for all your uh, yarns, then leave it to the default. This is strictly for display. This is for how to display it on the computer screen. Mostly, you don't need to change this unless you're doing variable width, and we'll show you that later. So for the next one, let's pick this guy and pick the X, and we'll call this one yellow. Next, we'll clear this one, and we'll call it 10-2. Next. So now we've set those two colors. There's a few other colors in here. We're just going to leave them blank. Dismiss the keyboard. Now go over to calculations again and look at the yarns. You'll see peach yellow was entered, the information. This information about how much yardage to use hasn't changed. We just changed the names and the type and that makes it easier for you to know what you're looking at. It will also show you the color table, and it will show you the color table for one repeat of the threading. So if, in this case, we'll have multiple repeats, uh, I'm not sure how many, but it, it, you just would cycle around this until you got to the right color. The heddle count, though, is for the entire width and shows you how many heddles you need for each shaft of your loom. We need um, 241 heddles because we have 241 warps and this displays how they're being set. Let's go back to the calculate set now. And I'm going to pick the little eye here. There's two ways of calculating your set. One is called the wrapping method and the other one is called the Ashenhurst method. The wrapping method, you wrap it around a stick or pencil and count the number of wraps for an inch. I call that the desperation method because it's highly inaccurate and, you know, it depends so much on the person and how they wrap. The Ashenhurst method is more accurate. In that, at this method, you would enter the number of yards per pound of the yarn. And then there's a chart down here for common yarns. If we look at tensile 10-2, it says to set 24 to 28 and use, and it uses 4,200 yards per pound. So that's the common, say, average amount that each manufacturer use. The manufacturers will produce also a chart like this often. Sometimes they don't, but often they do. It's best to use the manufacturer's numbers rather than these numbers because some yarns, 10-2 yarns, might be a little thinner, a little thicker, and their values are more accurate. But we'll use these for now. 4,200. So I'm going to enter 42 hundred yards per pound. And you'll notice down here it says the recommended set for upholstery is 90%. Well that's really tight and you don't usually use tensile for upholstery. But when we get down to medium weight clothing or 
six, uh, wool or soft clothing, lightweight clothing, we get down to smaller numbers. So let's pick about here, 21. I pick use set. I pick up here to project setup and I see now that it's set to 21. That will also adjust my calculations and I'm going to turn it back to 24 because that's what I really want to set it at. And we'll look at the calculations. They haven't changed, so but that's how you would do it. I want to show you the print. It shows a preview and connects to your printer. If you don't have a printer, I, you might be able to print to a PDF. Sometimes the, the PDF printers display themselves as, uh, I guess I meant to cancel and I didn't, so it's printing somewhere. Okay, so next I want to show you back to project setup and I want to talk about these other choices that you have for setting the fabric length and the fabric width. If you pick finished, it entered in the value it calculated because we'd already put in the loom width, it put in that, that width. But let's say you wanted it a little bit wider. You didn't want it nine inches. So we can put in here, we'll delete this, and we'll put in the width that we want this to be. So let's say we really would rather have 11 inches. Pick next and you'll see that that's that. Let's say in here we really want to get four yards completed, not three and an eight. So well, so I go over to finished. I don't want three and an eight. I want four here. Four. Pick done. So I have now said that I want the finished length to be these values. When I look at the calculations, it adjusted these values. Now you see the finished length is four. The finished width is 11 inches. But in order to get that 11 inches, you need to set it with about 12 and a quarter inches and the length has to be about five and a quarter yards. And that adjusts the warp count, it adjusts the pick count, and it adjusts your yardage that you're going to need for each one of these colors. Let's look at the other choice, exact. In the fabric width, if I pick exact, it goes through the pattern and it does it for one repeat and it says that repeat will be 3.5 inches on the loom. If I want to make it, you know, because that's not enough, let's put it in three full repeats. Now it says that I should put 10 and a half inches on the loom to get three full exact repeats. Likewise, if the exact length is harder with yardage because this 0.8 yards includes the waist and the shrinkage. So you get this small number. Well, that's gonna be probably about, since it's a symmetrical pattern, probably about 3.5 inches. So let's repeat this instead of one time. Let's try 50 times. I think that might be, get closer to what we want. It says that if we do this, if we did the threadling 50 times, we'd get about 4.4 yards on the loom. For a small pattern like this, it probably doesn't make sense to use an exact length. It, probably very inaccurate because the weaving picks is very approximate depending on the weaver. 
So it's better to use the loom length and let's use the loom as back to our five yards instead of using the exact on the length. And the calculations now reflects that. So I'm done with the first portion of this. The next portion of this demo will talk about the warp-faced, weft-faced, and using variable length threads.